I'm back with part two of my recap of the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. We already saw Alejandro demolish the individual competition, but can he keep that up for pairs and teams? So if you don't know, I am talking about the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships, which happened this summer in Valladolid, Spain. I already made one video talking you through how a puzzle competition works and the individual competitions. But today we are moving on to pairs and teams. I cannot believe how many of you watched that first video. And the people at the competition have been so nice. Look, they even sent me one of the bags that the puzzles go in. I have all of the puzzles from the individual competition. They even made me my own little name card. And look at this. Now I have a World Jigsaw Puzzle Competition baseball cap. I didn't know I needed this. Clearly I needed this. But anyway, make sure that you watch until the end of this video because I have been given permission, this is breaking news, I've been given permission to announce the date and the location of the 2023 World Championship. And that's not all. I'm also going to be participating in a competition this fall. So I'm going to have all the details about that at the end of the video if you want to sign up to compete against me. So I'll get to all of that later, but first let's jump back in to the pairs competition. All right, this is so exciting. This is where it gets really interesting because we can see how all of our favorite puzzlers pair up and see how they do working together. So this time we have two preliminary events to narrow it down for the finals in the same way as before. The top two pairs from each country make it to the final, and then from there you're just ranked by your finishing time. And for the preliminary events, once again, the puzzlers have to do a 500 piece puzzle in 90 minutes. Cuatro. Four. Tres, Three, dos, two, uno, one. adelante, Puzzle. suerte. So the puzzle they're doing is this countryside photo. There is a lot of blue, so I think it's slightly more difficult than some of the other puzzles we've seen, but you can separate it out into the barn, the flowers, the grass, the sky, the water pretty easily. So I really don't think any of our puzzlers are going to have any problems with this. All right, so in this round, we've got Katarina and Teresa from the Czech Republic. They have both already proven themselves to be very strong puzzlers. We've also got our champion Alejandro teaming up with Susanna. And this is interesting because she did well. She got 32nd in the individual final, but their combined average isn't as high as some of our other teams. So since it's two people working on the same puzzle, we can expect that this round will go a little faster than the individual rounds. And again, we have a lot of different strategies. Alejandro and Susanna are doing it in two different sections, so they're gonna have to rearrange everything to get it all in place and connect it all together. Whereas the Czech team has basically everything already in place, they're just gonna have to slide up that bottom edge to uh, connect it. Luckily, since it's only a 500 piece puzzle, there is plenty of room to spread out and, oh, oh, this is so exciting. Look at that edge connect into place. It looks like all they have left is the flowers and the grass and with one person working on each of them, 
it's really not going to be too long until they finish. And like, compared to some of the other teams, just look at how much further ahead they really are. Oh, but wait, we do get a shot of the Czech team and they are not too far behind. And they left basically the exact same sections for last. I wish that I could make this dramatic and say that it was close, but it's really not. No. No. Wow. The last few pieces go in super fast and Alejandro and Susanna are our winners at 20 minutes and 17 seconds. That is so crazy fast for a 500 piece puzzle. Like I am truly in awe. So after they won, there were a handful of other teams getting close. The live stream was basically the Alejandro show for a little while, so we didn't get to see a lot of the other teams' progress. But at 22-22, Katerina and Teresa get second. At 24.08, Angel and Demelza get third, and Soraya and another Alejandro get fourth at 25.15. The Hungarian women get fifth, and then the Italian team gets sixth. And then a very dramatic finish by the Swedish girls, Julia and Emily, where they had a piece under the poster board that is so stressful, but it's all good. They found it and they finished in 20th at 37.30. So here's the data. Here is a chart of the top 10 finish times. You can see that seventh and eighth place were literally one second apart. So they were basically a tie. But besides that, everyone else was fairly evenly distributed. All right, we're moving on to the second preliminary round. So if you are missing Kristen, don't worry, she's back. The puzzle they're doing in this round is of this cute little puppy. I actually think this is a little more difficult than the last one because each section is bigger and there are fewer different colors and textures. And there's a lot of white fur that all kind of looks the same. So we've got my friend Tammy and her partner Yvonne in this round. I am obsessed with Sophie and Patrice from France. Those orange glasses are such a vibe. Here at table two, we have the Annas and in the live stream chat, people were saying that they are like local celebrities in the Spain puzzling scene. So we're getting a lot of coverage of other contestants, but at nine minutes in, we finally got our girl Kristen with her trademark one-handed puzzling style. And I believe that's her mom that she's partnered up with. So around 11 or 12 minutes in, you can see that most of the teams have at least the edge done. The Swedish team is also one to watch because they both did really well in the individual competition. But in this shot, it's a little hard to see how much progress they've really made. Also, I showed this lady in the first video and I found out this is actually the mom and brother of Alfonso who ran this whole event. I love that his family came out to compete. It is so sweet. So at 16 minutes, the Annas are definitely doing it in two halves, starting with the purple background and the pink flowers. This is the strategy that we're seeing most of the teams take, which makes sense because the puppy will be easier to fill in once you have the rest of the puzzle to work off of. This team though, I don't really get this strategy where they sit across from each other 
but they both have it pointing in their own direction. So they're gonna have to flip either the top or the bottom instead of just sitting next to each other or having one person work upside down. But anyway, it looks like Kristen and her mom are the first we've seen to get any part of the dog done. They already have the basket too, so they're making great progress. But you can see that this puzzle is definitely more difficult because we're past 20 minutes now, which is when people were finishing in the previous round and nobody is even close yet. Okay, wow, so at 26 minutes after dominating in the individual, it looks like Kristen has fallen behind the Swedish team. Oh, but then the Annas are also getting pretty close. But the Swedish girls are down to their last maybe 10 pieces and they're about to finish. And then we cut to Kristen and we miss the last few pieces. La ronda así que ahí oh, la tenemos. 28-24, qué buen tiempo. 28 24. Muy bien, muy bien esta pareja, vamos. Fantásticas las sí, hermanas sí, sí. Svensson, Katarina, Magdalena, impresionante. But at 28-22, the Swedish girls are the winners. I am so happy for them. So it takes another two minutes, but Kristen and her mom come in second, and she looks a little more excited this time. We love you, Kristen. After another three minutes, the Annas come in third. One minute later, the French team finishes. And then with literally 14 seconds between them, we have Tammy and Yvonne getting fifth, and then Fernando and Monica from Spain getting sixth. So here are the results from the second preliminary round. Definitely longer times than the first round, but again, within this round, pretty evenly distributed. And I actually love that in the top five, it is almost all women. Just that one French guy, but otherwise the women completely dominated this round. All right, this is so exciting. It's time for the pairs final. It is time to find out which two puzzlers are the best in the world. So in this event, they have two hours to solve a 1,000 piece puzzle. This is the first time that we've seen a 1,000 piece puzzle. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it takes them. Probably more than 20 minutes is my guess. Tres, dos, uno, adelante, suerte. So since this is the final, this is an unreleased puzzle, so nobody has ever seen it before. And it is a tricky one, definitely the hardest puzzle that we've seen yet. So you can pretty easily pull out the building. The sky is just a gradient, which should be easy enough. But then look at all of these flowers. That is a huge section that is all one texture. 
So that's definitely going to slow down our puzzlers. So right off the bat, we've got a shot of the Swedish team and also Tammy and Yvonne. This is interesting. The French team seems to have grabbed at the boxes from their previous puzzles in order to do the sorting. The Czech team also has a tray off to the side that they're using, and so does Angel's team. And that's pretty necessary because there are double the amount of pieces, so you can't necessarily spread them all out on the table all at once like you could in the previous round. Okay, so here's Alejandro leaning over the table again, his fingers moving so fast. At seven minutes, you can see that the Swedish team is already working on the sky. It looks like they have all their pieces turned over, which is so impressive. Here's our first shot of Kristen and her mom. And interestingly, they haven't dumped out all of the pieces. They're just pulling them out of the box and into very distinct piles. So just like the individual round, they're definitely betting on a longer sorting period leading to a shorter assembly period. So it definitely looks like pretty much everyone is starting with, well, obviously the edge, but then also the lightest part of the sunset, which makes sense because that's probably the most distinct part of the image to sort out. So at 19 minutes, the Czech team is looking great. They have a big part there in the middle already finished. And Kristen and her mom have finished the sorting and moved on to the assembly. Ooh, okay, so now this is interesting. At 23 minutes, just like we saw in the preliminary, Alejandro and Susanna are each working on their own half. So they're gonna have to flip one section over. To me, that just seems like asking for disaster, moving that big of a section, but you know, to each their own. Okay, so at the half hour mark, we can really see that a lot of the teams have basically the entire sky finished, but not a single team has started tackling those flowers yet. Ooh, look at this. Okay, Angel is putting puzzle pieces on top of the finished puzzle. This isn't a strategy that we see very much, but hopefully there's enough contrast that he can keep track of where all of his puzzle pieces are. Okay, so in this shot, take a look at which parts Kristen has done compared to everyone else. I love how she always has her own unique strategy. So at 40 minutes, the Czech team and the Swedish team are neck and neck. This shot is a little misleading because their tray is covering a lot of the finished puzzle, but Alejandro and Susanna are definitely up there too. And the Annas are also doing really well. Like, look at all that progress. Ooh, at 50 minutes, the Czech team only has the flowers and a couple dark pieces left to go. Other teams are close, but it's the Czechs that are definitely in the lead right now. At 54 minutes, Alejandro and Susanna only have the bottom section left, but look at this, the Czech girls are so much further ahead. And the Swedish girls are also right up there with them. If you look closely, it looks like the Czech team has separated their flower pieces by shape, which is always a little bit of a risk because it takes time to sort out the pieces like that. But if you have a lot of the exact same texture, 
it can definitely make the assembly go so much faster. All right, down to their last few pieces. And Katerina and Teresa are our winners at one hour and two minutes. Ahí tenemos campeonas del mundo. Las chicas, qué fuerte. Nuevas campeonas del mundo en pareja. That is so incredible for a puzzle of this difficulty. I am so impressed by them. Then, at an hour and five minutes, Angel and Demelza get second. And then, literally 11 seconds later, Alejandro and Susanna get third. And then, 14 seconds later, they didn't catch it on camera, but Kristen and her mom finished in fourth. 42 seconds later, the Swedish girls get fifth. And then one minute later, the Annas get sixth. Oh man, I am exhausted. That was such a photo finish for all of the winners there. And what an upset with Alejandro dominating so hard in individual and then sliding down to third place in pairs. But I am so happy for Katerina and Teresa. Like, they are truly just incredible puzzlers. So we finish out the top 10 with Gray and Catherine from the US, Brigida and Nora from Hungary, Soraya and Alejandro from Spain, and Jana and Jacob from the Czech Republic. And my friends, Tammy and Yvonne, finish in 14th. So here are the final results for the pairs competition. Such impressive times, and look at how close a lot of the times were. All of the top puzzlers really are pretty evenly matched with each other. So here are the charts once again showing how many teams finished within each time limit and how many teams just didn't finish. And here is a look at how the rankings changed between the preliminary rounds and the finals. And then here is one more chart showing how the rankings changed between the individual final and the pairs final. Interestingly, only two pairs had both members place in the top 20 of the individual final. So that was such incredible puzzling by all of the pairs. But now it is time to move on to the ultimate puzzling marathon, the teams competition. All right, so the team's events work a little bit differently than everything else we've seen so far. So teams can be either three or four people. And again, there's a preliminary round and then the final. But the preliminary round is a little funny this time because there are a hundred spots in the final and there are only 77 teams who signed up. So they still did the preliminary round, but it was really just for fun because everybody automatically qualified for the final. I do wish they had done something a little bit more complex, maybe by like adding up your times between the two rounds or like taking some kind of average time between them but they didn't. So I'm still going to go through the preliminary round, but just keep in mind that it has no bearing at all on the final. Okay, so the way that this round works is so interesting. They are given four 1,000 piece puzzles. Then they have to pick two of them 
and they have to complete both in under three hours. So this is the first time that the teams really have to use their puzzling strategies to determine which of the pictures will be the easiest and the fastest to do. So these are all four puzzles. When I initially looked at them, the ones that I would most like to do, like just for fun, are the buttons and the art puzzles. But the ones that would actually be the easiest are the beach and the houses puzzles. And that's because you have a lot more color and texture separation to be able to sort out the different sections for different people to work on. With the buttons, while yes, you can sort it into three sections, within each section, it all kind of looks exactly the same. And with the art puzzle, you genuinely have so much space that is all like literally the exact same texture because it's an illustration and not a photograph. So since we have different teams doing different puzzles, there is so much data that we can get out of this competition. Like, just you wait, I'm gonna have so many charts. Three, two, one, puzzle! Adelante, suerte! Oh my god, look at this footage. This is madness. This is so chaotic. I love it. So let's take a look at some of our powerhouse teams. So Tammy's team is the Golden State Puzzlers and they're doing the houses puzzle first. The Czech team has Katerina, Teresa, and Jana all working together, which I am so excited to see. They chose the art puzzle and they are one of the only teams that chose to start with that one. So here we've got the French team. They also decided to start with the houses puzzle. And here's Alejandro teaming up with the Annas to make a team called Nonstop and they're also doing the houses puzzle. So the teams are encouraged, not required, but encouraged to wear matching shirts. And I love everyone who dressed up for this. So as we watch people work on their puzzles, a quick note about the rules. You might notice that everyone is only working on one puzzle at a time. And that's because you're not allowed to have like two people working on one puzzle and two people working on the other puzzle. You have to have everyone on the team all working on the same puzzle. And then once that first puzzle is verified to be complete, you immediately take it apart and then everyone starts working on the second puzzle. Also, I just wanna make a quick correction. Um, in the last video, when I was talking about the trays, I mistakenly said that for the team's competition, you were only allowed to use four a4 trays, which is eight and a half by 11. But um, I got my numbers all mixed up. You're actually allowed to use four A2 trays, and those are about 16 by 24 inches. It was actually Kiara who competed there, who pointed this out to me over on Instagram. So thank you for that correction. I apologize to all of the teams who I falsely accused of cheating. That was my bad, you're all doing great. Okay, back to the competition. At 21 minutes, here is our other powerhouse Spanish team called the Super Piezas, which includes Angel and Soraya, and they're working on the beach puzzle. Unfortunately, Kristen and her mom are not competing in the team's category, but we still have plenty of other puzzlers to keep an eye on. So at around 30 minutes, anyone who picked the houses or the beach is doing really well. They're all like halfway done by now, but the Czech team who picked the art puzzle are definitely falling behind. I'm going to show you the data later on, but the art puzzle was clearly the hardest of all four puzzles. So 
This was a bad decision on their part. At 40 minutes, take a look at these clear trays that the Golden State Puzzlers are using. I don't know what the benefit of clear trays are. Um, I should ask Tammy about that. Ooh, but look, Alejandro's team is almost done with their first puzzle. Look at how chaotic it is when four people are trying to finish one puzzle. <laughs> It's so funny. So at 43 minutes, they are the first to finish their first puzzle. So you can see how it is verified and then they immediately take it apart and the next pieces get dumped out. Imagine if you accidentally mixed the two pieces together or even if you just like mixed one or two pieces. Oh my God, that would be such a disaster. Okay, wow, take a look at how far behind the Czech team is compared to everyone else. We've got another finisher at 48 minutes and then another at 49 minutes. Tammy's team finishes their first puzzle at 54 minutes. And then interestingly, they decided to go for the buttons puzzle, which not a lot of teams did. You're gonna see that data later on. So passing an entire hour, the Czech team still has that entire middle section to finish. Meanwhile, other teams all over the place are finishing and moving on to their second puzzle. So here are the finish times of the first 10 puzzles, but remember none of this is final because all of them still have their second puzzle to finish. Alright, so at this point in the live stream, we're getting a whole lot of shots of various teams finishing their first puzzle, moving on to the second, but not a ton of progress on our front runners. So here at an hour and a half, Tammy's team is making pretty good progress with the buttons. I'm sorry, I should be calling them the Golden State Puzzlers. Everybody is just as important as everyone else. I just happen to be friends with Tammy. <laughs> team Nonstop also decided to go with buttons and you can see that they already have the entire blue section done. And then at an hour 38, we didn't see them finish but the Super Piezas are the winners. They did the beach and then the houses, so definitely the two easier puzzles. And they had incredible times at under 50 minutes for each puzzle. Three minutes later, Team Nonstop finishes for second place. I mean, did we really think Alejandro wasn't going to be in the top three? And then another three minutes later, Team Ectiel featuring Kiara gets third place. So then for fourth place, we have a jump of 18 minutes. But then the Golden State Puzzlers get fourth with a time of two hours and two minutes. And then within 30 seconds, the Spanish team Super Nenas finish and Literally at 30 seconds after that, the Czech team finishes. This Czech team, they flew through their second puzzle in order to still get sixth place, 
after being so far behind with that first puzzle. It took them an hour and 19 minutes to do the art puzzle, and then only 44 minutes to do the houses puzzle. So that is such a huge recovery. All right, so now it is time for the data. Here is a look at the final times of the top 10, along with which puzzles they solved. But then this is the best chart of all. So only 25 teams finished both puzzles. So this is an illustrated look at their times for the two puzzles, color coded by which puzzles they solved. So the fastest solve of all was by nonstop, who did the houses puzzle in just under 44 minutes. You can really see how long the art puzzle took the check team and then just how fast their second puzzle was. And look, you can see how the Jigsaw Junkies were pretty far ahead at the beginning, but then they also did the art puzzle second, which slowed them down and knocked them down into 15th place. So this one would have been a lot to color code, but here is a look at all 77 teams' finish times between the two puzzles. So you can see which teams uh, didn't finish their second puzzle, and you can see that five teams didn't even manage to finish one puzzle. So now let's take a look at the breakdown of how many teams chose each puzzle. The houses and the beach puzzles were the clear favorites. Only 12 teams attempted the art puzzle and only 11 teams did the buttons puzzle. And here it is broken down even further by how many people actually finished each type of puzzle. But then take a look at the puzzle pairing. So 71% of the teams did both the beach and the houses puzzle. That is a wild amount. Like so many people clearly realized that those two were definitely the easiest pictures. Also interesting that not a single team attempted both the art and the buttons puzzles. So here's a look at how long each puzzle took, only using the teams that actually finished the puzzles. And then here is a look at all of them organized by time rather than by puzzle. If you look at the color coding, it is so obvious that the houses puzzle was by far the easiest because so many of the faster times were like all that puzzle. All right, so once again, thank you to my sister for helping me um, organize all of those charts. So amazing work to all of the teams that competed, but remember that all of that basically meant nothing <laughs> because we still have to do the team's final, which is where the real puzzling champions are decided. Oh man, it is finally time for the culmination of this whole event, the team's final. Now, really quick, I just want to tell you about the 2019 team's final. In that one, this is intense, they had eight hours to do four puzzles, two 1,000 piece puzzles and two 1,500 piece puzzles. The winners finished in four hours and 11 minutes, which is so incredible for that many pieces. And then look at this, the 18th place team finished with less than one minute to go which is so intense for an eight hour puzzling marathon. But this year they decided to simplify it. Instead of being eight hours long, it is three hours to complete one 1500 piece puzzle and one 1000 piece puzzle. And remember, since this is the final, these are brand new unreleased puzzles that no one will have done before. So the thousand piece puzzle is this stylized illustration of Times Square. This is a really difficult puzzle, especially for a team to work on, because 
Besides a couple little elements, there really aren't any big sections to separate out. And then the 1500 piece puzzle is also super high difficulty. You can separate the rocks, the water, the skyline, the sky, but then that is so many pieces that are just a solid blue up there at the top. So that is definitely going to slow down the puzzlers. Tres, dos, uno, adelante, Go. suerte. So Team Super Piezas has moved to the coveted Table 1, and they're starting with the 1500. The Golden State Puzzlers are starting with the 1000. We've got the French team sorting using the other boxes again. The German team, who came in third in the qualifying, are also starting with the 1000. The Czech team is starting with the 1500, and here is Team Nonstop also starting with the 1500. And you can already see that everybody is leaving those dark sky pieces for last. So jumping ahead to about 26 minutes, the Golden State Puzzlers have the edge and some of those larger inside parts finished. Team Nonstop has made a lot of good progress on the 1500, and you're gonna see that everybody starts from that center skyline and then works their way up and down. And then here we can see that the Jigsaw Junkies are doing really well on the thousand piece puzzle. Jumping back to table one, Look at how much progress they've made. That is so impressive for a 1500 piece puzzle as difficult as this. And then here's the check team just a couple minutes later, but they're not nearly as far along. But look at team nonstop. They are going so fast and they've already started sorting by piece shape, which we're going to be seeing a lot of for this puzzle. Okay, wow, at 39 minutes, the Jigsaw Junkies are probably more than halfway done with their puzzle. Compare that to the French team who are way further behind. And then the German team is probably uh, about halfway between the two. Ooh, this is fun. I love seeing everyone switch places. I think that is a great strategy to get fresh eyes on a new part of the puzzle. Although you do lose a couple seconds getting into place. So around 50 minutes, we're really seeing these puzzles come together and we can see different strategies for what order they approached the different parts of the puzzles. You can really see how with the 1500, you can do it section by section, whereas with the 1000, you're really working all over the puzzle all at once. So at one hour and one minute, we have our first puzzle finished. The Jigsaw Junkies finished their thousand piece puzzle and are immediately moving on to the second one. Ooh, okay, look at these beautiful rows of organized pieces. That's really the only way to do a puzzle with large solid colored sections. And oh my gosh, this is so chaotic, I love it. At an hour eight, the Golden State Puzzlers also finish their thousand piece puzzle. At an hour 11, the German team also moves on to the next puzzle. So here is a look at the top times so far 
But remember, these are only teams who started with the smaller puzzle. So you can see that the teams that started with the 1500 are really slowing down as they're getting to that solid blue sky. It looks like the Czech team is also starting to separate by shape in order to do the sky. So a few more teams are finishing the thousand, but still no one has finished the 1500 yet. All right, we're now more than halfway through. A lot of teams are really struggling, but it looks like team nonstop might be pulling ahead. Ooh, okay, this is interesting. So I've been talking about how the French team uses the other boxes, but it looks like what they do is they divide up all of the pieces into the boxes so everyone has their own box to sort. I didn't see any other teams using a strategy like this. Usually they'll just dump them all out into one big pile. So at an hour 47, we've got a rearranging by the Czech team. And look at this, nonstop is getting so close. This really is a battle between nonstop and the Czech team to see who will finish the 1500 first. Also, take a look at the Norwegian team and their uh, creative way to get to the other side of the table. I feel so sorry for that girl's back. And now at an hour 54, we have our first 1500 piece finish from team nonstop. That is so impressive given the difficulty level of this puzzle. Meanwhile, everyone else is still slogging through the same parts of this puzzle. In the last video, people kept saying that they wanted to see these people race a solid colored puzzle but I'm just like, do you really want that? Like, isn't it more fun when the puzzles are moving quickly? This one, it's just moving so, so slowly. Okay, so <laughs> is this allowed? Instead of taking apart their first puzzle, this team just lifts up the paper and places it on top. They're not going to win, so it's fine, but I feel like that should be against the rules. Okay, here we go. At two hours 15, the Czech team finally finishes. I mean, their first puzzle. They still have to move on and do the smaller one. Team Nonstop is making great progress. They have 40 minutes left to finish this thousand piece puzzle. So it'll be tight, but it's definitely doable. The Golden State Puzzlers are still making a lot of progress, though I just know they're gonna slow down once they hit that sky. So with half an hour to go, Nonstop and the Czech team are racing the thousand piece puzzle. Wow, okay, look at this. Nonstop is making such incredible progress on their second puzzle. We're getting so close to the end, and then this team finishes the 1500. So they are dumping out the second puzzle, but they have to know they're not gonna finish. At this point, you really do just have to connect as many pieces as you can into three piece sections. Since the number of pieces you've put together is how you're ranked if you don't finish the puzzle. Oh my gosh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, wow, they truly are non-stop. At two hours and 54 minutes, team non-stop 
is the winner. They are the world champions. They finished both puzzles in under three hours. What a truly incredible achievement. So with four minutes left, I'm gonna be honest, no one else is even close. Everyone is just scrambling to put in as many pieces as they can. Dos. Manos arriba. A manos arriba. Nadie puede tocar ya ninguna pieza. And that is time. So everyone has to step away from their puzzles. So that was, oh my God, intense. Only one team finished both puzzles. What a highly, highly difficult puzzling challenge. All right, so now everyone has a little bit of a stretch, but now we need to figure out who came in second place, third place, fourth, etc. So this is how they do it. Instead of sitting there counting how many pieces they put together, it looks like they're making piles of 10 pieces that were left over. Then it is way easier to count up those pieces by 10 and then just subtract that from 1,000 or 1,500. So here are the results. In second place, we have Team Ectil. I'm so sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that right. And they put in 2,230 pieces. In third place is the Jigsaw Junkies with 2,216 pieces. Fourth is the Czech team. Fifth is Spuzzles 2. And sixth is my friend Tammy, the Golden State Puzzlers. So some of the other teams that I focused on were the French team who got ninth place. Surprisingly, after winning the qualifying round, the Super Piezas dropped down to 11th place and the Super Nanas got 15th place. So now let's take a look at the data. Here are the top 10 teams with their final piece counts. And here you can see how many pieces all 77 teams managed to put in. I feel like they may need to adjust the timing or the puzzle difficulty next year because looking at this, most of the teams weren't anywhere close to finishing. Here is the timeline of the top 20, so you can see which teams did which puzzle first and when they finished. As you saw in the recap, the Jigsaw Junkies were the first team to finish a puzzle at one hour and one minute, but Nonstop actually had the fastest time for that puzzle at just under an hour. And Nonstop also had the fastest time for the bigger puzzle too. Here you can see the breakdown of how many teams did each puzzle. And you can see that only five teams managed to finish the 1500 piece puzzle. Here are all of the times for the 1500 piece finishers. Again, literally only five teams. And then for the thousand piece puzzle, the top 10 is the exact same that I showed you earlier, only with nonstop squeezed into first place. So here is the big timeline of all 77 teams. The lighter lines are the thousand piece puzzle and the darker lines are the 1500. And then finally, here is how the top 20 rankings changed between the qualifying and the final rounds. And you can see that the order actually changed quite a bit. All right, so that was the end of the actual competition. But in the last video, I did tease that there were prizes for all of the winners. So let's check out the awards ceremony to find out what everyone won. All right, it is time for the award ceremony. Here's a look at the entire prize table. So some people get puzzles and some people get medals and checks. 
Here you can see a close-up of the metal design. Very cool looking. And the top individual winner gets this trophy, which is such a cool design. So first up is Teams. The Golden State Puzzlers got sixth place and each won a 3,000 piece puzzle. And I'm just so happy that Tammy got to go up on stage. In fifth place is Puzzles 2 from Spain, and they each won a 5,000 piece puzzle. Fourth place was the Czech team, Puzzlisi, each winning a 9,000 piece puzzle. And then winning the bronze medal and 300 euros, the Jigsaw Junkies from the USA. The silver medal and 500 euros went to Team Ectiel, representing Germany. And of course, in first place, winning the biggest check of the night at a thousand euros. It is team nonstop, the only team to finish both puzzles. Personally, I feel like they should get an extra little uh, bonus prize for that achievement. So moving on to pairs, the Annas got sixth place and each won a 3,000 piece puzzle. Katarina and Magdalena from Sweden won fifth place and they each got a 5,000 piece puzzle. And Kristen and her mom Siv got fourth place and a 9,000 piece puzzle. Third place is Susanna and Alejandro winning a bronze medal and 200 euros. In second place is Demelza and Angel, winning a silver medal and 400 euros. And of course, Katerina and Teresa from the Czech Republic won the gold medal and 700 euros. And then finally, the individual medalists. Katarina from Sweden got sixth place and a 3,000 piece puzzle. Gisela from Spain got fifth place and a 5,000 piece puzzle. Chiara from Italy got fourth place and a 9,000 piece puzzle. And then getting the bronze medal and 100 euros is Teresa from the Czech Republic. Kristen from Norway won the silver medal and 300 euros. And of course, our champion Alejandro won 500 euros, the gold medal, and the coveted World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships trophy. Let's just give an extra round of applause to Alejandro because his performance in these championships was like off the charts. All right, so we're almost done. <laughs> but outside of the main competition recap, there were just a couple extra things that I wanted to talk about. Okay, this dad and his son in the pairs event. Oh my gosh, the cutest thing ever. And look, they finished their puzzle. I also wanted to give a shout out to the Australian team. There were so many competitors that I just couldn't focus on everybody or else these videos would be as long as the original live streams. But I loved the Australian team's shirt designs and how consistent they were in wearing them through every day of the competition. And I just love how athletic they can make puzzling look. Also, I really love Australian accents, so here's a little clip from their interview. How was it? How was the, how was the double puzzle today? Oh, we loved it. Um, I think we've done better than we expected, and um, yeah, we worked awesome as a team, so we're really proud of our effort. Speaking of interviews, I am living for these super awkward interviews where there might be a slight uh, language barrier and nobody really has a lot to say. <laughs> Teresa, how are you feeling? Uh, I don't know. It's a very big surprise for me. So it's, uh, I don't know what to say. How do you feel after coming second, the second fastest puzzler in the world? Uh, my mind is blown. Yeah, I'm so surprised. <laughs> uh, what happened to your lucky slippers? 
Uh, well, this year I changed it to another slippers and they were obviously unlucky, so I didn't bring them today and we won. <laughs> La verdad que aún, aún lo estoy asimilando porque ha sido, bueno, tensión absoluta, muchos nervios, pero bien llevados. So here I am with the American team, the Golden State Warriors, uh, who are fourth in the team qualification competition. And were there any team tactics involved today? We won't drop the pieces. So, were, 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 did you have crosswords in between then? Were, were, you, were you all happy with the decision initially? We started to regret it. Um, maybe about 10, 15 minutes in. <laughs> but you decided not to change puzzles then? No, that that wouldn't have been a good option for us, I don't think. Um, I'm not sure. And so... Tak zdravím všechny do České republiky, co nás sledujete, hlavně Prahu, Brno, Ostravu, zdravíme, zdravíme domů. Doružený kluky a všechno. So I'm just really glad that we could actually hear from the competitors themselves after an hour of me just talking about them. Also, I want to give another shout out to the pink shirt team because it was their first time all puzzling together. From the Netherlands, Países Bajos, Israel, Israel, Malta, Malta, from Latvia. Latvia, Letonia in Espanol. Yeah, I'm really happy that we uh, did it also without fighting and we worked together <laughs> nicely. It was our very first time puzzling together, so we're very uh, happy we, we did quite well. As someone who was trying to make sense of all of these hours of footage, I appreciated so much any teams that color coordinated and were easy to identify. So I want to give another shout out to Tammy and her high-tech puzzling. She had her own timer on an iPad every round, and she also shot time lapses of all of her solves on her phone. So if you wanted to watch those, she has all of the videos up on Instagram, along with a bunch of other photos from the event. And speaking of Instagram, Yvonne, Kiara, and a bunch of other competitors were all posting lots of photos and videos from the event. So you can scroll through the hashtags that I have up on screen if you want to see more. And our favorite puzzler, Kristen, is also on Instagram now. She actually just posted a video of her solving the London puzzle using two hands. I know, I'm shook. In my opinion, that video should have broken the puzzling internet. And I love how she says in the caption that it was total chaos. <laughs> also, I love how she's Kristen Puzzles and I'm Karen Puzzles. I really hope that we get to puzzle together someday. And then I also wanted to mention Kronika's Puzzlers, which is an Instagram account run by Jimena and JL. As I said, I couldn't focus on everyone in these recaps, but I've been following them on Instagram for a while now, so I was so happy every time I saw them on screen. They posted their own detailed recap posts of each different event, including one about the team's final, where they said that a lot of the participants were disappointed, frustrated, or shocked because of the extremely high difficulty of the puzzles and the fact that only one team actually finished, which is really too bad. And I really do think there was a big misstep in choosing a puzzle that had such a huge area of a solid color. Like, if you look at the puzzles from the 2019 team's finals, all of those are way easier pictures. But I've been emailing a lot with Alfonso, who ran the event, and he assured me that they're collecting all of the feedback, including all of the comments on these videos. And they have a lot of improvements that they're going to make for next year, including having English commentary on the live streams and not just Spanish. Speaking of next year, as I teased at the beginning of the video, I have been given permission to announce the location and the date of the 2023 World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. It will be in 
the exact same location in Valladolid, Spain. And it'll be September 20th to the 24th, 2023, with registration opening up on January 1st. So they do eventually want to start having it in different countries. But remember that this is only the third time this event is going to be held. Of course, there have been lots of other speed puzzling contests all over the world throughout the years. But the 2019 event was the first World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships put on by this group of people. Then it was canceled for two years because of the pandemic, and then they could finally hold it for the second time this year. So it's not like this is a long established event or anything. So for now, it just makes sense to keep holding it in the same location. So since it is more than a year away, I obviously haven't started like booking any travel yet, but I am definitely planning on being there. It's gonna be so crazy to show up and be like, Hey Alejandro! Hey Kristen! Hey Teresa! <laughs> I'm gonna know everyone's names. <laughs> I spent so much time looking at all of this footage as if they're like TV characters, so it's gonna be so exciting next year to finally meet everyone in person. And speaking of meeting people in person, I am also happy to announce that I will be competing at the Jigsaw Puzzle National Competition, happening October 21st to the 23rd in San Diego, California. This is going to be pretty similar to the Worlds event in that there will be an individual, a pairs, and a teams event. And it'll be my first puzzle competition and my first public event since becoming Karen Puzzles. You know, I've been on YouTube for a really long time, so I've been to VidCon and all kinds of other YouTube events, you know, as Karen Cabot from HGTV and my DIY channel. But this puzzle channel really only blew up during the pandemic, so I haven't had the chance to get out in person and meet all of you. So I'm so excited for this in-person event. I'm definitely going to be filming it for the channel, but if you want to come out and say hi and compete against me, registration is now open. So all of the details will be at the link down in the description. Oh man, okay, this is such a long video. <laughs> but really quick, I just wanted to shout out my Patreon. I started the Patreon earlier this year and it has been such a huge help in me doing this channel full time and being able to take the time to make videos like this one. So if you want to help support me, you can sign up for $3 a month. I also put up an exclusive bonus video alongside pretty much every main channel video. So the one today is my live reactions that I filmed while watching the puzzle live streams. Yes, 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 they did it! Yay! An hour and two minutes. <laughs> oh, well, oh, that was so stressful. Also, I recently just opened up my close friends list on Instagram just for my patrons. So that's been a really fun way to share little behind the scenes snippets on the go while I'm filming and editing. So a huge thank you to all of my patrons. If you wanna sign up, the link as always, will be down below. And also thank you to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation for putting on such a great event and for giving me permission to make this video and use all of their footage. So let me know in the comments if you think you would ever participate in an event like this one, or if you were at the competition, let me know if I missed anything or got anything wrong. Your code word for the comments, if you watched all the way to the end, will be incredible, because I want you to tell these puzzlers just how incredible they really are. So happy puzzling, and I will see you all in the next video. And in the next one, I'm actually 
gonna be solving all of these puzzles from the individual competition and comparing my times to all of the world champions. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> They're so fast. <laughs>